what is going on with the re debt restructuring talks? Um, are creditors being informed of all of these steps that are being uh, taken to privatize PREPA? Well, yes, uh, many of many of these steps are publicly uh, known. You know, we uh, we uh, we got the market sounding for about five of these companies. Uh, they got shortlisted after that, and, and we got four uh, at the end, I believe. But it is uh, about twice as many as we expected, uh, even the most optimistic of us at, at, at one juncture, uh, which showcases that the market is responding well now. When the market responds well, it is a good signal as well for, for the bondholders. So it, it is, uh, in my view, and, and we've been very transparent uh, with uh, our timeline. Again, as, as uh, uh, you know, the executive director noted, uh, we expect that by uh, the December 10th to 15th timeline, we should be closing uh, mm -hmm. on a deal. Uh, prior to that, of course, uh, uh, there's a lot of process evaluating the proposals, uh, um, you know, shortlisting. And are the creditors involved in that process? Is my well, well, no, no. That, no? That, 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 do that, they not need to be? Is that they don't need to be. Okay. They just need uh, to be privy to the fact that uh, this process is, is moving forward and that uh, we feel it's beneficial to all stakeholders, uh, both, uh, you know, the U.S. citizens in, in Puerto Rico and, and of course, um, our creditors as well. And what's going on with the negotiations per se? And you could provide an update? Well, you know, I, I am somewhat limited uh, on what I can say there. I, I can say that, that as in the past, we, we it, this, this seems to have uh, cycles. Uh, there's a, a sort of cycle where, where things move forward. Uh, we arrive at, at uh, preliminary agreements and then there's uh, uh, other minutia uh, that comes into play and then stalls uh, the talks. Of course, with, with the PREPA bondholders, as you know, it's it's not just one creditor. It's uh, a, f a few uh, creditors that uh, have different, uh, I would say, aligned priorities. So it is uh, it is complex, um, uh, but nonetheless, we we've made. Uh, you know, we've, we've made a proposal. Uh, we expect to see that this move forward. Otherwise, you know, uh, Title III has its mechanisms and, and we'll solve it that way. And what do you say to the people that suggest that PREPA should be put under receivership? Well, I, I'm say, I would say take a look at what we're doing uh, before. You know, it, it is easy to look at PREPA and say, you know, uh, PREPA has never done things right. Uh, so why should we believe uh, they, they're going to do it now? Well, uh, you know, and, and this uh, sort of conversation has also uh, gone upwards to Washington uh, mm -hmm. at some point. So what I've done is, is very simple. I'm Unfortunately, I didn't bring my, my roadmap here. I have roadmaps for, for different uh, uh, items, but I can, I can certainly mm -hmm. uh, narrate it uh, to, to our listeners. Uh, I've decided to write out a roadmap uh, that established our objectives, the key levers, the timelines, uh, the critical projects, and um, you know, show them where we're at at every one of these things. Uh, our objectives, and I'll reiterate, is to have a, a modern system that is uh, customer centric, that uh, is resilient, that is reliable, uh, low cost, and that we can shift to renewables. Uh, in, in, that, in that sense, there are certain key levers, some of which we control, uh, we meaning the government of Puerto Rico, and some of which the federal government controls. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I lay out all of those uh, levers, it's the transformation law, which we passed. It is the unsolicited proposals, which we've started to get a lot of them, quite a few. Which, mm -hmm. uh, it's the market sounding, which we've done. It's the IRP, which we expect to have by a February, March time period. Um, it is the operational efficiency that uh, I am happy to say that uh, uh, Jose Ortiz has done a great job in getting operational efficiencies uh, uh, better. Um, and it is, uh, uh, of course, the uh, uh, recovery funding. Mm -hmm. And when I showcase this to, uh, to all of our friends in Washington and in Puerto Rico, and the ones that, that might be thinking of a re receivership, and I let them know what we've done and what uh, other stakeholders need to do, they can see that what is within our power, whether it be the government or PREPA itself, uh, we've done what we need to do, and we're pushing forward aggressively on that. I mean, there they're, hasn't been any administration that has put this uh, this as a priority and has uh, moved forward as, as quickly uh, as we have. So I, I, I think it's... Uh, 
it's uncalled for, uh, uh, and, and I understanding the background of why they ask, but I would ask them to see what we're doing, see what our expectations are, measure us based on what we say we're going to do and the results that that we uh, uh, that we achieve, uh, and you'll see that uh, we'll get this transformation process going so much so that uh, what I I believe very few people thought was going to be the case in you know by the end of. Uh, 2019, we're going to have uh, a transmission and distribution concession done. But, but, and again, the economy depends on it. It, it does. It the economy. So that is why, and, and I had, you know, we had a uh, uh, sort of a retreat for, for our government officials and we discussed several items. <clears throat> One of the, uh, uh, I'm not going to go into all of the details, mm -hmm. but uh, in general, we, we spoke about the vision and what we wanted. But we also spoke about priority and key levers that we have to pull. And uh, uh, the our Energy 2.0 model is uh, one of our top three priorities okay. um, the administration. 